Hi, welcome back. In this lecture, I would like to talk about a really fascinating topic that is um, the concepts of uh, quantum RAM or uh, quantum uh, memories. So how we're going to, to design with the tools that we have a memory that allow us to use a superposition of uh, states. So far, we have been initializing our input register by hand by basically using uh, the right um, QPO instruction. But we are limited to uh, just basically using um, classical data. If we have to use and develop a quantum application on a very large amount of data, for instance, a machine learning application, we will need to read the data into the QPU registers from the memory. This is obviously not a trivial requirement, as uh, we might want to initialize a QPU register with the superposition of uh, values. So we will need a certain quantum technology. And this obviously is something that uh, the conventional RAM doesn't fit. So how the classical RAM works and how we can store and retrieve data using the classical RAM. Well, in the classical RAM, we have uh, uh, two register, the output register that is uh, in not initialized and the uh, address register that contains uh, the location uh, where we have the values that we want to uh, retrieve. So we read values from a memory where a binary address allows us to locate uh, the stored values. And basically we have just two, these two registers, output register that is not initialized and then it will return our, our values and the address register only provide the location. So in uh, the example we see in these uh, slides we have uh, the address register that is one zero, that is the, the following. And then our RAM is uh, allow us to retrieve uh, the values that is connected to this um, address. So in this case it would be 100. Zero, zero. That is uh, the following here. So we can use obviously conventional RAM to store values for uh, initializing uh, our QPU register only in the case uh, that uh, we have a conventional value. What is a conventional value? Well, the conventional value is, uh, is a pure state or also means that is not a superposition of, uh, of state. So if we have a conventional value, we can just simply use the conventional RAM and then do a write a QPU instruction to, to initialize our uh, QPU. So what we're really interested in, uh, in this lecture is really to, to see if we can develop a RAM that uh, allow us to store also superposition of state. And this is what we call, we're going to call the uh, QRAM. If we want to initialize the QPU register in a superposition of uh, uh, store values, then it becomes a little bit uh, more tricky. So for instance, we want to, to store the value of uh, 3 and uh, the uh, values of uh, 5, uh, basically just using one uh, uh, address, for instance, at uh, this one. So in a classical case, using the RAM and uh, the subsequent uh, write operation, there is no real way to achieve this. So we need a, a new uh, piece of uh, hardware that is our uh, QRAM. So something fundamentally quantum in, in nature that we call the, the QRAM. How we design that? Well, we can take inspiration from uh, the classical RAM. And you see here on this plot, uh, we are having a realization of the, the QRAM. As uh, in the classical case, we are going to have uh, uh, two uh, registers, the output register and the address uh, register. So what is the major difference between a classical RAM? Well, the major difference is, is this. These are uh, quantum, uh, quantum registers. So both the output register and the uh, address register are quantum register. That means that it allows us uh, to have a, a superposition of, uh, of states. So for instance, we can uh, specify a superposition of uh, location. Uh, when uh, we say that we use the address uh, register. And consequently also receive a superposition of uh, corresponding values in the output uh, register. So the major trick is that uh, we provide in the quantum register a superposition of states. Uh, and these superposition of states are basically the different addresses in our QRAM. And then we go to these two addresses, two or more addresses, and we retrieve uh, uh, the, the values. Uh, that will be in the output uh, uh, register. So let's see an example here. Uh, we have one 
uh, on the first qubit of the address register and zero of the uh, second register. And then we apply an abnormal gate to put our address register in a superposition of states. What are these uh, superposition of states? Where are the superposition of states in uh, state one and the state uh, three? And these are going to be the addresses. So in this case, we are able to uh, specify uh, two addresses. So one is uh, uh, the state here, and the other one is the state uh, here. So because we have uh, the address register in the superposition of these uh, two states, we are going to retrieve these two states here, one and, uh, and, and this one. And you can see here from the circular notation on this diagram, uh, this will be uh, our one. 1, uh, 0, so this is state uh, 6, that is uh, it's going to be this one, and then we have state 7, that is going to, to be uh, this one. So we were able to, to start from uh, a conventional uh, RAM and uh, develop uh, the so-called QRAM by basically using a simple analysis. So instead of using a normal register, we use a quantum uh, register for the address, and for the output. In this case, uh, the address quantum register in, the, in quantum circuit denotes the register that provides the QRAM with the uh, addresses, address or addresses in the case of a superposition state. And D denotes the register where the QRAM returns a corresponding superposition of the store values corresponding to the addresses that we provide in the quantum register uh, corresponding to address. There are examples of uh, QRAM uh, technologies that have been proposed. Obviously, this is just the beginning, so the implementation details are likely to subject to, to changes. The important point and that we, we have is that QRAM at uh, our disposal allow us to, to start building a more sophisticated quantum data structure. And for instance, we can talk in the next uh, few lectures about vectors and matrix data. This is the last slide of this lecture and talk to you soon.